Hello, this is Ms. Schrader. Today we are going to be talking about the Boston Tea Party. My students, you are going to need a piece of paper and something to write with so you can take some notes. When you're done, you're going to be writing me five complete sentences in paragraph form. You can do that either in a Google Doc or on the piece of paper. Um, make sure you have a strong introductory statement as well as your facts that you find interesting, educational, and important. And also you want to have a strong conclusion. We're going to start with the picture that we're looking at right now. This is a picture showing the Boston Tea Party. This picture was done by a man by the name of W.D. Cooper in 1789, so not too long afterwards. Um, however, it would have to be a secondary source. There's no evidence that he was there. Um, and this particular piece is in the Library of Congress. Now you have to realize that before the Renaissance, um, there were very few beverages available for people to drink. There was water, milk, alcohol, but a lot of the beverages that we are used to today, even the tea, coffee, and the hot chocolate were not yet available. Tea, coffee, and hot chocolate are all things that come from India, China, and the Americas, and started to become popular amongst the wealthy in the late Renaissance period. And it was considered a status symbol that you could drink these things because you had the money for them. Eventually, though, they become less expensive and more people are drinking them, and particularly tea. Tea becomes something that is considered very middle and upper class. So if you are even a middle class person, you can afford to have tea. Also, one of the main ingredients with the tea would have been sugar, which is sweetening it. Um, a lot of the beverages up until then did not have something sweetened in it. So this has a big effect. So you can't imagine the significance of tea um, amongst Europeans, the English, and the Americans in the 1700s. In 1767, the British Parliament gave the East India Company a monopoly on tea being sold in the English colonies. The East India Company was a British company um, of merchants who had ships and things and plantations in India. They were harvesting tea, selling it in a variety of places. But because they were being given a monopoly in America, that means they were the only people who could legally sell tea in America. As a result of which, they could increase the price significantly because um, nobody else could sell it. As a result of that, this, a lot of Americans started um, black marketing Dutch tea from um, Dutch uh, traders. But of course, this is illegal, and if you get caught, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. On May 10th, 1773, the British Parliament put a tax on tea coming into the American colonies. And they were doing it in a very subtle way. They were doing it in a way in which the tax is actually being paid by the East India Company. And the tax is not being paid until the tea actually reaches land. So when the ship comes in with the tea on it, the tax is not yet paid. It doesn't have to be paid until the tea is brought onto the land. And this is very important. A lot of the Americans, however, who were aware of this, were very frustrated. They felt that they were being taxed unnecessarily. The, in, the East India Tea Company was going to increase the cost of the tea for the Americans to pay for the tax. And so the Americans were protesting about this. As a result of this, um, American politicians started calling for a boycott on tea. They called on Americans to stop drinking tea. And keep in mind, Americans at this point, they were drinking a lot of tea. Um, a lot of American ladies, like the one you're seeing here, um, started looking in their recipe books for things that could be used as a substitute for tea, making various types of tea-like beverages using berries and things like that. In the later part of 1773, um, we have the arrival of three tea ships from the East India Company, the Dartmouth, the Beaver, and the Eleanor, all packed with tea. And the Americans know that the ta tax on the tea will not be paid until the tea actually reaches land. For a while there, 
protesters are actually standing outside on the harbor, not allowing the tea to be brought ashore. And the British military are debating how they're going to handle that. Uh, the ship that you're seeing right here is a replica of one of the ships, the Beaver. The tea ships sat in Boston Harbor for a couple of months while there was discussion about how to get the tea off of the ships without causing a lot of violence. And a lot of Americans were pushing the idea that this was not acceptable. Samuel Adams, one of the political leaders of Boston, was pointing out that the tax, the tea tax, was a case of taxation without representation. They did not have representatives in Parliament in England to help make the laws, and yet they were being forced to follow the laws. And this was definitely something that led to the start of the American Revolution. On December 16th, 1773, a large number of men dressed themselves as Mohawk Indians and went to the tea ships. Now, the reason they're dressed as Mohawk Indians isn't to try and convince people that they are Mohawk Indians. It's simply to disguise who they were. Because according to what we've been told, there were very rich men amongst this group. There were sons of liberty amongst this group. There were a variety of different people. So they go on board the ships. They take the boxes that have the tea in them. And they open them up and they throw the tea out into the water. They throw the boxes out into the water. And the story goes that having done this, they clean the ships, make them nice and neat and pretty, and then they leave. The ships were not damaged, nobody was hurt, um, and they're done. Now, this is a picture of Samuel Adams done during his lifetime. And I know my students are going to be thinking about the beer, Samuel Adams beer. Uh, the beer is named for him at one time in his life. He was a brewer. But the truth of the matter is that he was really more of a firebrand, a guy who liked to bring up political trouble and was constantly in protest against the various different things that the British were doing. As a result of the Boston Tea Party, um, the British actually closed the port of Boston until the people of Boston paid for the tea that had been destroyed. Adams himself said that the Boston Tea Party was a principled protest to defend citizens' rights. Think about it. This is a protest in which property is damaged, but no people are injured, and the ships themselves are not damaged. And it's basically just saying the thing you want us to pay for, we don't want to pay for. As a result of the Boston Tea Party, um, the British closed down the port of Boston, not allowing any ships to come in or go out until the tea was paid for. This is going to be very, very difficult for the citizens of Boston since it is a city that is built on trade using ships. In fact, quite a few merchants offered to pay for um, the tea and the British government refused saying that the city of Boston itself had to pay for it. As a result of this, as well as the Boston Tea Party, a huge number of Americans started rising up complaining about the behavior of the British. And eventually they start the first Continental Congress, which eventually leads to the Americans rising up and fighting the American Revolution, ending the um, control of the British over the United States. A great many American historians point out that the Boston Tea Party is one of the starting points of the American Revolution. And in the modern era, when people point out the Boston Tea Party, they normally are pointing out that it is a nonviolent way of protesting something. Today, there is a Boston Tea Party Museum at the site of where the Boston Tea Party took place. There is a, there are replicas of the ship, like I showed you um, earlier. Um, there's actually um, a tea chest known to have been one of the tea chests that were used, it was found. And the American Antiquarian Society has a vial of actual tea infused harbor water from 1773. All right, my students, you are going to be giving me five complete sentences in paragraph form about what you've learned from the about the Boston Tea Party. 
Uh, you want to make sure you're telling me anything you find educational, interesting, and important. Thank you.